In the stock market, one thing you always want to do is search for the answer. In order to do this, you need to explore all perspectives. So today, we ask the question, is the stock market correction over? In order to answer the question, we're going to look at research from Canaccord and MarketWatch, along with a third perspective. So let's take a look. Canaccord's chief market strategist, Tony Dwyer, says his shock drop indicator suggests the market bottom for the year has already been formed. Dwyer summarizes the shock drop indicator as a deep dive into human emotion and markets. And a shock drop is a correction, sharp enough to cause the 10-week rate of change in the CBOE volatility index, or the VIX, to spike to 125. He found that historically, every shock drop was followed by a bounce and then a nasty retest of the low as volatility began to decline and then the move to new highs. Dwyer believes that the latest action in the stock market off the February lows is comparable to other times in history. And therefore, he's provided some charts here beginning with 1998, which is the upper portion here. We had the high the decline in the stock market, creating a spike in the VIX over 125, a rebound up to this point here, and then a retest of the low with lower volatility, and then the ultimate move higher through here. The lower portion of the chart is from 2010. Again, we had the high at this point. We had the decline in the market creating a spike in the VIX over 125, a retest, excuse me, a rebound this area here, and then a retest on lower volatility, and then ultimately a move higher. Two other charts here. Into 2011, we had the high at this point, or a relative high at this point, with the move down, creating a VIX spike over 125, a rebound, a retest under lower volatility, and then the ultimate move higher. And then here we have the current chart with the previous highs at this point, a decline in the market, causing the spike in the VIX over 125, a rebound up to this point here, and then a retest of the low under lower volatility, and a slight move up to here. We haven't moved to higher highs yet, but that's the expectations. So now let's take a look at the perspective from MarketWatch. When will the U.S. stock market return to record levels? According to MarketWatch, if history is any guide, it could be sooner than you think. Stocks have seen solid gains thus far this month, as is typical for April, with all three major U.S. indexes up about 2%. That rally has helped them close the gap with the all-time highs hit in late January, and the length of time since that record could be a reason to feel optimistic about stocks, according to one analyst. On average, stocks fall for about 13 weeks after a correction before beginning to rebound, says Jeffrey Kleintop, who is the chief global investment strategist at Charles Schwab & Company. Based on that, he wrote in a note, the stock market correction might be over soon, although he cautioned that heightened volatility may not be going away for a long time. And they provided this chart here. And as we can see, with a typical average 10 to 20 percent correction here in the blue following the top here and the decline through here and in about the 13 week time frame the typical 10 to 20 percent correction is over and the market is on its way back up now if it's an average bear from the top here the decline down to this point and we maybe move up in a rebound but then we're off and going on the way downward through time here. Now, the current market is in the green, as you can see here. And again, we're nearing that 13-week period. Therefore, apparently, we will know soon enough if we're going to be a typical average 10% to 20% correction and on our way up, or 
if we're going to be an average bear and head on down. We'll see soon enough. Kleintop further wrote the stock market may revive as the earnings reporting season unfolds and tax refunds are invested over the remainder of this month. Of course, markets could still suffer losses this month as worries over trade wars, currency wars, and actual war, among other factors, combat investor confidence. This view, that is the correction may be running its course, has been supported by other historical trends. According to Goldman Sachs, the typical correction took 70 trading days to trough and 88 days to recover. Including last Thursday's session, the S&P 500 had been in a correction, defined as a 10% drop from a peak for 50 trading days. Even if the current cycle doesn't extend into a drop of that magnitude, the odds are good that significantly worse performance, such as a bear market or a 20% drop from the peak, is not in the cards, according to Goldman Sachs. Of the 36 corrections that have been seen in the S&P 500 since the end of World War II, 24 of them didn't presage a recession. And of those, 20 of the corrections didn't expand into a bear market. In other words, about 50% of all corrections did not lead to a bear market, compared with the 19% that led to both a recession and a bear market, and in those cases, broader economic factors, as opposed to merely a decline in stock prices, were the driving factor. So let's take a look at another perspective. The U.S. stock market has largely been moving sideways over the past several weeks, meaning that while swings have been sizable in both directions, it has mostly traded within a range. With the S&P 500 well off a record high set in early January, its 50-day moving average has been moving lower. The 50-day moving average is moving down from a recent peak in March. The S&P hasn't closed above its 50-day moving average since early March. And looking at the chart here, you can see this here is the 200-day moving average, either here in the green, and the orange is the 50-day moving average, peaking here and declining through this point. And then the blue is the S&P 500 up until this point here, mid-April. And at the same time, the market's general uptrend over the past 12 months, a period over which the S&P is up 15%, means that the index's 200-day moving average has been sloping upward. This line, which the S&P has dipped below a couple of times in 2018, is used as a measurement of longer-term momentum patterns. Currently, the 200-day stands at about 2,600. And these trends, if they persist, could soon result in a very bearish technical signal one that could start flashing around the late May holiday period, and that signal is known as the death cross. Mathematically, if the market continues to go mostly sideways over the next four to six weeks, the S&P will hit a 50-200 day death cross at about 26.29, right around Memorial Day. And that's just a projection. And that death cross, if you don't recall, is when the 50-day moving average of a security drops below the 200-day moving average, and it's widely seen as a bearish indicator that can signal weakening trends and point to potential losses ahead. And the analyst noted that he didn't necessarily expect this, but he's just making these comments, but not as a forecast, just an observation. And he added that if the market goes back into a sustained uptrend, the 50-day moving average will turn higher and could avoid crossing through the 200-day moving average. It's impossible to know which will happen at the moment, but it's worth watching in the near term. And of course, we watch this because they watch this. Do I believe we're going to head to a death cross? Well, watch my next market update and subscribe to this channel. So for today, that's True Dog Charts. Thank you.